You're listening to the Martin Houston Show on Tide 100.9 in Tuscaloosa. Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Here's Eddie Garcia. Week two of the NFL season got underway with Thursday Night Football in Miami, where the Bills handled the Dolphins 31-10. Buffalo running back James Cook had three touchdowns in the win, two rushing, one receiving. Bills are off to a 2-0 start, and they have won 12 of the last 13 meetings against Miami, including five in a row. For the Dolphins, quarterback Tua Tungavailoa threw three interceptions. One was returned for a touchdown, but the worst part of his night was suffering a third known concussion when he was hit running for a first down in the third quarter. He didn't return. His status going forward is unknown. Week three, the college football season got going with a couple of Thursday games. Arizona State was down 21-7 on the road, rallied back for a 31-28 win over Texas State. Sun Devils are 3-0. and South Alabama beat Northwestern State 87-10 First win for Jaguars new head coach Major Applewhite. In baseball games, a note Yankees get by the Red Sox 2 1 in 10 innings. New York's lead in the AL East is at 2 on Idle Baltimore. Alabama first and 10 on the 12. Again, Houston. He's got a hole. He's over. Alabama touchdown. I'm just wondering if your listeners know how good a football player you were. I can still see you playing that fullback, knocking those players out of the, out of the way in there. I believe I could have run behind you. Martin, I can remember when we came to center and you were playing fullback up there. And I saw you in the weight room and watched you, watched you work out in the weight room. At least you pick up, you were strong enough to pick up the whole weight room. I wanted to fix it, and I run in that case didn't take the test. <laughs> biggest, biggest mistake we ever made. The Martin Houston Show with national championship winning fullback Martin Houston. Giving you one hour of intense, hard-hitting analysis from an insider's perspective. It's time for the Martin Houston Show on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Good morning. Welcome to this Friday edition of the Martin Houston Show with Martin and Xavier, powered by Max Sports. I am Xavier Houston. We have Martin Houston as well. Uh, as we get ready to kick off this free for all Friday, we'll be talking, of course, Alabama, Wisconsin. Don't forget, this is your last chance to get your score predictions in and total rushing yards by the Alabama Crimson Tide. Today, we'll be talking about players of the game, keys to victory. We'll take a look at Wisconsin. Uh, one thing I want to bring up is the the jersey swapping, depending on offense and defense, depending on if Alabama's playing at home or away, so the, so the team gets to see that look. Uh, offensively uh, for the offense. Um, so I think that's something really neat that Coach DeBoer has done. But I'll kick it over to you. I have no idea what the jersey swapping means, so you're going to have to explain that to me. Uh, explain that probably to uh, uh, several of our listeners, including me. Uh, and it is the Martin Houston Show powered by Box Eye Care. Uh, we want to appreciate you for jumping in with us uh, this morning as Martin and Xavier but we also invite you to get in on the conversation uh, on the Empowerment Strategies and Solutions hotline at 205-342-9904. That's the Empowerment Strategies and Solutions hotline. If you want to learn more about Empowerment strategy, Strategies and Solutions, go to empowermentstrategy.com. That's empowerment with an M, empowermentstrategies.com. Also, you can join us on the live stream uh, at The Martin Houston Show on Facebook. Uh, we'd love to have you, your thoughts, your comments, your reactions. And as Xavier said, hey, if you don't have your score in, the uh, Alabama Legacy Collection Score Prediction Contest is still open with the tiebreaker being total rushing yards for Alabama football. So uh, total yards including Jalen Milrow. So we want to get those thoughts, uh, your reactions there as well and it's a friday so that means it's a free for all friday and that is powered by pharmacy the pharmacy at midtown 
Uh, check them out at pharmacymidtown.com. More than your typical pharmacy, uh, offering a lot of great services. New patients, please call 205-579-9933. Compounding, uh, that's meds made with you specifically in mind. Free delivery, let them come see you. Uh, long-term care, immunization, medication savings, and a whole lot more. That's the pharmacy at Midtown. Remember that this is the day that the Lord has made, so let's rejoice, be glad in it. Take some time today uh, to uh, notice someone, love someone, serve someone, be the difference you want to see in the world today. Uh, X, before we get into it, uh, Bam Bam 72 has already hit it. Um, is it time for Tua to hang it up? Ah, uh, man. Unfortunately, I think it might be um, that, that it – I don't think he suffered a concussion last season, but I think that would make three – I still make three in three years because of the two really serious ones he had a couple years ago. And that's just the three that I know of. And you're talking about – two of those leading to posturing, which if people don't know what posturing is, that's where your body locks up and you'll see an arm extend or fingers cross and things of that nature. Um, man, it, it, it was another scary sight to see. And I, I think it might be time just because I don't know how many more of these he can take and it not have long-term effects. I mean, he has a wife now. He has kids now. At some point, they have to be more important than football. Yeah, the question becomes, uh, did they write that into the contract? And we, I don't know that. Uh, hey, hey, since we it was Free For All Friday, uh, and we're going to try to get into some conversation, uh, I'll toss it back to you, man. Yeah, uh, we're, we've got J Rob on the line, but I want to hit this real quick. When I was yeah, talking I was about go ahead. The conversation, yeah, uh, the the jersey swap. So, what Coach DeBoer has been doing at practice is, and it, this is really something that helps the offense more. Um, when the first two weeks Alabama has been home, the offense has worn the crimson jerseys in practice and the defense is on the white tops. And this week the offense is on the white tops and the defense is worn the crimson tops. And I heard, I, I heard him say it this week that this is something that he does to help the quarterback's eyes because you're, when you're on the road, you're throwing to the guy in the white Jersey. So it helps the quarterback see that for a full week of practice. Hmm. And and it helps them leading into the game. So I thought that was something really neat and interesting because, you know, traditionally, uh, I think it, it offense has always won the Crimson Tops and the defense has won white. Or I can't – now it's crazy I can't remember this. or <laughs> But depending on home or away – Offense will wear Crimson or or white top, depending uh, if they're the road team or not. So it's really about the defense, not really the, about the offense. It's about giving the quarterback a chance to read against darker jerseys or lighter jerseys, uh, based on what he's yes. going to see on the road. Okay, yeah. hey, that I mean that's that's another. That, that's what I'm saying. This guy, man, I'm telling you, uh, Alabama fans, hang in there. <laughs> if 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 him and Courtney Moore and this staff can continue to recruit, uh, lock down the portal, uh, the coaching is going to and is going to be better than what we've had the last few years. Will he be the goat? I'm not saying that. Will he get us some championships? Yes. So hang in there, Bama fans. Uh, we might get there this year, but I'm telling you, there's nobody. Uh, the more I hear about him, the more I love him. Uh, uh, X, that is brilliant. I mean, you, you know, people don't think about stuff like that. We going all the way back to the nineties. X, uh, when we would go play Tennessee, we played Rocky Top all week long. I mean, Coach Stallings 
everybody thought about music being new to the practice field. When Coach Stalin was here, we, he brought, I'm talking about massive speakers, the size of a door height, like stacked on top of each other, just where you could not. I mean, it would be so loud, <laughs> especially if you were on the field closest to the speakers. And I'm talking about deafening. And we had to learn to do it. And the, and the difference is, actually, when we played Auburn in 89, mm-hmm. we didn't prepare for that, and that cost us a game. If anybody want to know why Auburn beat us in 89, their stadium was so loud that we could not call our plays and we did not have a system. Every time we went to the line against Auburn X, we had a ch- – I mean, in that 90, 89 season, we had what they call check with me. If you were in a run defense, we call the pass play. If you're in a pass play, we call the run play. You couldn't be right defensively. And you, and you, there was nothing that you saw us do that you knew that we changed the play. But it took audible communication. So you thought it was just a snap count. And in the Auburn game, we could not hear at all. And so things like that, man, that that's huge. I, I I like it. I did not know anything about that. So that's that's a good inside scoop there, man. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool when I found out that he did that, and um, it, it, and it was I saw I I I, I, I can't know, don't know why I'm drawing a blank, but when I saw the Swiss jersey, I was like, hmm. And then I saw somebody ask, and he was like, oh yeah, this is just something we do to help the the quarterback see differently. And I think that that is a step and an advantage for any offense. And I think all teams should probably do it at this point. Oh, I think you'll see that just like the the the, the morning practices and uh, the nutrition, all those things catch fire. I think you'll quickly see this <laughs> catch fire. If it's not, it may already be a thing, who knows? Right. But hey, uh, we're gonna. Go- well, we're going to go ahead and get the break so we can okay. get the callers in on the other side and not cut them short. Uh, throw it back to you for the sponsors. All right. Hey, as we get the break here, don't re- don't forget that we are powered each and every day uh, by great folks like Box Eye Care. Uh, Box Eye Care. Go check them out. They'll take care of you in that great new location. More space, more room, but the same great service. Greater inventory, greater uh, competitive prices, everything that you need for your uh, eye vision care as box eye care. And to get some specifics and get your appointment set up, go to boxeyecare.com. They can handle, handle you there. Or if you're old school like a lot of us, 205 342 06 Six zero. That's two zero five three four two zero six six zero. Box I care. Box I care. Dot com. Tide one hundred point nine traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center, TGIF to you. We're getting started with a crash on McFarland Boulevard eastbound near Joe Malisham. It's blocking the right turn lane and it's specifically just before Flatwoods Road in Northport here. Also, construction zones, that may keep you or that may... Visit us at 3537 Skyland Boulevard East or online at bmwoftuscaloosa.com. BMW of Tuscaloosa, take your dreams for a drive. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. Mostly cloudy, a few showers and thunderstorms are likely today and tonight. The high today, 80, tonight's low, 67. Or tomorrow and Sunday, mostly cloudy, scattered to numerous showers and thunderstorms both days. Highs between 77 and 80. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. The sound of Bama sports. Your show. Your team. The Martin Houston Show. On your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9. And streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Welcome back into the Martin Houston Show with Martin and Xavier, powered by Box Eye Care. As many of you know, uh, the Empowerment Strategy and Solution has three different divisions, empowering leadership, advancing financial literacy, 
and driving growth with an emphasis in banking and real estate. And if you're looking uh, to buy a home, sell a home, get into a new home, uh, give me a call. Uh, you can call me at 205-826-1381. Uh, or if you want to call uh, the office, I have partnered up. Uh, Martin Houston's Banking and Real Estate has partnered up with Realty Warren Group Legends here uh, in Tuscaloosa, but we can serve Tuscaloosa, West Alabama, and beyond. So if you're looking to buy or sell a home full service, uh, any needs you may have, whether it's uh, buying, selling, listing your home or getting into your dream home, uh, that is uh, the Martin Houston. You can call Martin Houston Banking and Real Estate, 205-826-1381. Glad to be a part of Realty One Group Legend uh, and glad to serve you in all of your real estate needs. Back to you, X. Yeah, as we, <clears throat> excuse me, as we continue this Friday free for all edition, of course, we talked about two is the injury uh ready to start, and we've got some people wanting to call in on that and also talk about the game. We've got J Rob in on the Empowerment Strategy and Solution Hotline. How are you doing this morning, J Rob? Happy football Friday, everybody. Hope you're doing well. What's up, man? Happy Friday. Hey, uh, Coach Saban and his staff always wore the opposite color during the games as uh, as the football team, so they could tell uh, they wouldn't confuse. They know with who the staff when they come off the field. Like if they were at home, they they wear white. If they're on the road, they wear red. So the so the players could see the staff when they come off the field. I don't know. If or, they could see it. or they could see them on the sideline. When right, right. Yeah. When it's coming off, yeah. So not just coming off, A Rob. Job, J -Rob it, was, it was not just uh, when they were coming off. It was also so when they looked to the sideline, uh, they could see the play call or they could get their attention to. Right, right. That's kind of like you know, kind of like the, the jersey squad. That's what they did. They did so they could they could tell the difference, uh, and they wouldn't get you know uh, confused with everybody else. But uh. I don't know if y'all saw the game last night. Did y'all uh, see Tua getting hurt and all that? I didn't see yeah. the game, but I saw the highlight. Well, uh, I watched it. That, that, the thing about it was this: they were uh, they were on the move. They were they were like they got a, Tua got a first down, got hurt. Uh, I think he got a concussion. I'm not sure exactly what kind of injury he had, but uh, oh, it was he had a first, concussion. First and uh, first and uh, first and goal about the four, uh, and that was it for the game for them for Miami. I mean they they run four four straight plays, didn't score. I mean they were at that point they were still in the game, and it seems like they quit. Miami quit after Tua got hurt. I mean even you know Waddle and Hill they they, was, they showed them sitting on the on the sidelines uh, with plenty of time left to go in the fourth quarter. Buffalo didn't even try to score anymore either. I mean, they just you know running, running straight straight up in the middle. And what what's the deal with that, Martin? Why in the world do they quit when uh, they they think there's no chance to win the game? Is that is that why? I mean, what? Tell me why. Explain to me why you would quit in a football game. You're getting uh, paid to play football. Well, well, sometimes remember, uh, football is just a. a microcosm of life and a great teacher of life. Uh, and I think that, uh, J-Rob, it can happen for different reasons. Um, some of it could be just straight out concern for their guy. You know, yeah. um, uh, it, they, they, they could be shook, man. Like they could realize, dude, our whole season just went down the tank. That could be part of it. My personal goals just went down the tank uh, because two is the dude that's going to get me there. Uh, and so I just I just lost money. Or it could literally be their pure concern over the health of a young man who has been training to do something his whole life. Uh, you know, they they just they just get, give up. Uh, and Andrew said wish I could quit when I, I work. Andrew, you may not quit, but there's a lot of people who do the same thing on their jobs that these guys did. There's a lot of people who go to work, uh, J-Rob. J-Rob, 
Let me, yeah. to, to Andrew G's point, Andrew saying wish he wish he could quit when he go to work. J. Rob, if you were to put a film on uh, the average business and watched it like um, we watch an NFL game, how many people would you see do the exact same thing you saw those guys do every day? Oh yeah, I, every I, day. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, and, and so I, just, I, I was just I was just saying that in response to Andrew saying he wish he could quit. There were not everybody quit. There were some guys who quit, and it's the same way yeah. in our work life. That's why. That's what I meant by football and sports is just a microcosm. X, you may have a different view. No, I mean I I get it. You see something like that happen to to your your guy. I mean the quarterback is what people might feel is normally the most important player on your team. And when you see him go down the way he did again, because you got to remember a lot of these guys were on the team two years ago. Right. When, when he locked up like this before, that is a horrifying moment for a lot of guys. And in a moment, you're already down 31, 10, you know, it, it, it can shake you, no matter if you're getting paid millions of dollars or if you're a kid playing Little League. Money don't, well make better. Money, money don't make you better, J-Rob. Money just makes you more of what you are. Uh, so, um, 100%. So, so, you know, just because they're making millions and doing that, that doesn't that, that make them reacting different. Hey, J-Rob, you got a uh, let me see. We already have your score. Okay, yeah, yeah, you got my score. It's 30, 31 to uh, 17. 31 17 with 250. We got to get to another call. You got anything else before we get out of here, real quick? Right quick. I'm looking forward to seeing the offensive line. Hopefully, that's the starting group from tomorrow. Hopefully, some gelling can start happening and uh, we can have a uh, well well rounded game to, uh, tomorrow. And uh, hopefully, uh, everybody will play good. Y'all take care and roll tide. Roll tide. Roll tide. All right, we've got Allen on the line. Allen, how you doing this morning? Oh, oh. is Allen there? <laughs> call back, Allen. Just Allen. call back, Allen, okay? All right, so we'll go ahead and move to Tommy from Romulus. Wants to talk about the game. How you doing? I'm doing great. How y'all doing, guys? Hey, good morning, Tommy. Tell me, is your friend cooking bacon this morning? Or you just no. got up on this Friday morning? <laughs> Not my friend, it's my brother. No. Oh, your brother? I, is your brother yeah, kicking yeah. back? I, I want to give J. Rob a complex. I called in twice this week. You know, <laughs> last week he left the rain in the ditch. Coming up here, he heard me on the radio. And Monday he fell out of bed. And he thought he was dreaming. I just want to give him a complex for the weekend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really evil, Martin. Deep now, I'm really evil. Ask Ron, fella. He'll tell you the truth. <laughs> what you got for us, man? Well, I just wonder about the, what y'all think of the key of the game is for tomorrow for Alabama. I mean, I think you got to be the offensive line, and we got to cut down the penalties and the turnovers. Yeah. I mean, the third quarter last week was awful. Oh, yeah, the, the keys. What we think our keys to victory are? Yeah. Okay. X. Okay. Yeah. yeah no. Um. That I'll go ahead and throw in a, one of mine. It, it is the offensive line. The offensive line has to play better. The offensive line has to jail and start to come together as a unit. And it's yes, we're this game three, but this is the first time we'll probably see this lineup, and it might not be the lineup that practice together. All, all camp, so there's that. Um, but offensive line ha- does have to play better, and I also believe that the defense has to keep things in front of them this week. And, J-Rob, I mean, uh, Tommy, I'll add uh, just another, I think, key to victory. Xavier hit it a little bit. I think we had a lot of broken tackles uh, last week compared to what we did week one. Uh, South Florida seemed to have – uh, ran harder, ran through some tackles uh, in in the run game. And so going to Wisconsin, even though it's not the Wisconsin of old, they still like to to run the ball, uh, run it physical when they call run play. So I think broken tackles or lack of broken tackles uh, 
by a Wisconsin versus our defense is one of the keys. We'll get into some more, but that would be the couple of them right off the bat. Yeah. What about you? What, other than O-line, what else you think we need to do? Well, like you said, tackle battle. I mean, it would just seem like I think it's a perfect time for us to go on the road deep down because two weeks ago, new coach, first game in Bryant, Denny. Last week, they named the field after Coach Slavin. I think there was a lot of stress or pressure on the team. I mean, really. And just say, Mom, we can't lose. We can't lose. We can't mess up. I mean, I just, I just felt like they just had a lot of pressure on them. And two, I'm number two going to have to learn now, a new receiver, that people are going to hold the heck out of him when he's running down the sideline. He's going to have to get separation because it's going to get tougher and tougher because he's already scored three touchdowns this year. And I remember I talking to him, and he has a target on his back because you have these juniors and seniors who play on the other side of the ball saying, well, this 17-year-old kid ain't going to make me look like an idiot. So he's going to have to separate, you know, little things that will add up to victory. So, but, um, no, I'm looking forward to more. I mean. I can't. I mean, I don't think you're wrong with any of that. Um, the, the Going on the road, I think it is a good time for this team. And I think it'll be what this team needs. And, you know, hopefully we can right the ship on a few things and be prepared for uh, a break, an early break in the season, and keep it pushing. But you got anything else for us? Tommy, you got a score for us? Uh, just, let's say uh, 34 to 16. Uh, what about total yards? Well, about total about, rushing uh, yards, total rushing yards. Oh, total rushing yards. I'm going to say 245. All right. Thanks, thanks, Tommy. Let's get the break here. Uh, as we get the break, we'll be back on the other side to keep the conversation rolling right here on your home for Alabama sports. Hey, don't forget to check out the uh, Legacy Collection. Get your officially licensed co-branded Alabama Legacy gear, the Martin Houston Legacy Collection. Uh, man, it's some sweet, sweet gear. Uh, you can find it at athletestrad.com forward slash collections forward slash Martin dash Houston. We'll be back on the other side to keep the conversation rolling. Tide 100.9 traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. TGIF to you. We're getting started with a crash on McFarland Boulevard eastbound near Joe Malisham. It's blocking the right turn lane and it's specifically just before Flatwoods Road in Northport here. Also, construction zones, that may keep you or that may make his clients. Remember M for money and Mezreno. If it has a logo on it, call me. 205 800 8,000. Interact with the Martin Houston Show by calling us at 205-342-9904 or tuning into the Martin Houston Show on Facebook. Welcome back in to the Martin Houston Show with Martin and Xavier, powered by Box Eye Care on a free-for-all Friday. Uh, we thank you and we thank uh, the pharmacy at Midtown for uh, doing that. We want to get you in on the conversation on this free-for-all Friday via the phone line, hotline, and or uh, Facebook Live. But in the meantime, don't forget to go check out North River Timbers Company, North River Timber, 205-242-5127. Courtney White and Chase Pearson, 205-242-5127. Uh, or you can email them at NorthRiverTimberCO at gmail.com. Harvesting, timber harvesting, appraisals, and land management. X? We get ready to kick off this second half. We're going to take a look at uh, this Wisconsin team for a, a minute and get into some keys to victory. Uh, when we're looking at what Wisconsin is, 
is this a Wisconsin team of old um, compared to the, you know, the grind and pound days, you know, Pat brought up run Dane and even the Wisconsin team Alabama played back in 2015 during that national championship run. I think the ideology has changed a ton when you really stop and look at it. Um, with the, with the way that they're doing, you know, last year was the first time I heard this, that Wisconsin threw the ball more than they ran the ball with Luke Fickle, Luke Fickle and uh, Longo, who came from Clemson, I think, um, with this team. And this is with a, 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 a team that had Braylon Allen, who was the Derrick Henry 2.0 of college football um, the last couple of years, 6'3", 240 pounds, and they were throwing it more than they were running it. What are your thoughts about that being – uh, a change in ide- ideology and why they were able to get a Tyler Van Dyke to transfer there. Yeah, I, I think without a doubt, uh, you can look at it and, and see that it's not going to be the same uh, percentage per se X uh, of pass versus run. Um, you know, the, the, first of all, I, I, I don't think that they're a very explosive offensive team in general, and I also look at game, you know, one uh, where they were behind, uh, and so I think they were chasing from behind in that game, and that even threw it up. But right now, even with uh, Tyler Van Dyke up there, right now, uh, a couple games in, they have 63 attempts uh, in the passing game for 406 yards in 87 carries for 367 yards. So, you know, this year may they may kind of try to go back to it, but I still don't think you're going to see the run Dane Alvarez days at Wisconsin anymore. Uh, it, thus, you, it, to your point, that's why they can go out and get a, a Tyler Van Dyke to, to transfer there because Fickle is trying to move away from that. Just think about what he had at Cincinnati, what he – did is one year at Washington. I mean, at Ohio State, I think that's where he's trying to go. But they still want to play physical. Yes, they do. And they, they're they still going to have a big offensive line, big old country boys from up north. They're still going to try to hit you in the mouth. But they, but even the running backs are different. You look at, like I said last year, <laughs> you look at Braylon Allen, who was a Ryan Williams type, graduated high school a year early, played last year as a junior at 19 years old and is now the youngest rookie in the NFL. He is a uh, Chaz Malusi, who is a 60 year senior that came back home um, after having a, a really bad ankle injury last year. I watched him watch the game where he broke it. Um, he's more of a, more of a, a slasher guy in the molds of what, what Alabama has, I guess Jam Miller would be the most, compared of running back to him on this Alabama team. But their defense is still going to be um, a physical defense. They are also without a key linebacker this week for the first half in Jake Chaney, who got a targeting call last week. And I saw that one. If that one was targeting, God jumped up in the air. Chaney put the top of his helmet in the guy's sternum. And so – a little bit more justified than the one that you saw from from Justin Jefferson, which I still think is a, a ticky-tack call. And I think every call that was ticky, they tacked against Alabama this past Saturday. Uh, but their defense, what do you think when you see their defense with what they've done against Western Michigan and, and who they played last week? I, I, I think it'll be um... – I'll be disappointed if we don't see Alabama put up uh, in, in, in a, a high 30s to 40s uh, against this team because, to me, what it'll mean is we didn't execute. Um, if Alabama's offense executes, to, to me, even though he's transitioning, Alabama's clearly the more talented team, but not just the more talented team. Alabama's a more explosive team. Wisconsin doesn't have the athletes to run with Alabama's offense. Um, 
And so X that in some ways that brings me to a question I would want to ask you around play calling. And I, I'll circle back on that. Uh, and we talked a little bit about opening up the playbook, but it's not just the playbook. It's the, the flow of the plays, but real quick on the targeting thing. I was watching Arizona state and Texas state last night. Um, mm-hmm. It's so bad. It, it, it's, it, the officiating is so bad. Uh, maybe this is what people feel when they watch Alabama play, that the bigger school, the brand school gets the calls. They had a play that the guy did everything. He ducked his head. He hit with the crown of his head. He hit the other guy in the side of the head, everything. They called no targeting. I mean, it was the absolute, like, I was like, okay. I looked at your mom and said, well, that's textbook. He's out of here. The announcer was like, well, that's textbook. If you want to show it, that's textbook. That's textbook. And they didn't throw it. So I, that's what I hate about targeting, and, and it's just a stupid rule. And then the, the uh, I'm not even sure who ended up winning the game, but uh, on the most important drive of the night, uh, changing fields, they actually threw out the other guy uh, for Texas State for a much less questionable hit uh, in open space. The one against, what you call it, was he was, all, the guy was almost on the ground. He was probably two, maybe maybe six inches from being down. And the guy ran in with his head down and hit him. The other one was a, a, a tackle sort of like Jefferson. and But it, it's just frustrating. Anyway, back to the play calling. What, uh, when, when you look at it, we talked about the playbook opening up. But, but even if, let's say we run the same plays, X, do you see a way that we could even be better uh, if we don't add anything new? Uh, do you see a way for the same play to be more effective potentially in this game? Yeah, I think if the offensive line is better, um, there were several times where it was just if Jalen had had a split second longer on some of those deep balls. We talk about we talked about oh Alabama needed to change the change the play calls and go short passes because of the offensive line. Well, the offensive line had held up for just a split second longer. Early in the game, you saw uh, Jalen get up hobbling a couple times because of the the a guy falling at his feet, rolling on his ankle, and things of that nature. So I do believe if this offensive line holds up just a tenth of a second longer, or half a second longer, you see Jalen be able to set his feet and get into that throw a little bit better. So if we don't change a lot of things, I think that's one way that we can really help the situation with getting the ball down the field. Uh, yeah. Another part for me, X, is, you know, you say hold longer. It's not even, it, I think that's part of it. Uh, but the other part is the middle has to hold. Jalen, I, I heard people complaining about him backpedaling instead of stepping up in the box. Well, he couldn't because the pocket was the entire pocket was what they call being pushed back and then collapsing around him. So his only way out from that was to back up. Um, and, and so that that that's going to help. And the other thing I would add, X, is, you know, the run game itself. Um, mm-hmm. if, if we're able to run the ball up the middle uh, and, and, and gain some yards, through the run game, then I, I I think that that helps. But I think we need to string some calls together. I think we need to string some uh, play action calls together. And I, I'll close with this. I mean, string some you know drives together because what we haven't seen a lot from this team, even though we've had an offensive explosion, is execution in a 10, 12 play drive consistently. <laughs> uh, and so that mm-hmm. would be huge for me. Here's, here's one other question I have, and then I'll, I'll toss it back to you, and you can get, take us a break. Uh, X, is is Jalen holding the ball or the wide receivers not getting open early? Ooh, that's See, a good question. I, I, everybody watches how long Jalen has the ball. But when you go back and look. Are they I looking down the field? Or are they, are they looking at his first read? We don't. I don't know. You don't always know what his first read is, but uh, it was a couple times where it was that was said, and and I, I I just replay back when I could see the receivers, and there was no separation early. 
the first, you know, he looked to the left, so I assume that that was his first read. And the first, second, third receiver were all, like, locked up. Yeah. So. Then I, I think that could have been an issue when you, you look at it. When guys aren't getting open, we, we can't. Okay, so last year everybody was saying he couldn't read. He couldn't go through progressions and things of that nature. Well, this year, you're complaining that he's holding the ball. Well, he's trying to read the defense. He's trying to go through his progressions. But somebody has to be open for him to let the ball go. Right. You know, if, 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 if they're not open or he doesn't feel – now, there, are, there might be a, a couple situations where it's, hey, you got to trust your guy – that he's going to beat it, beat a guy out of the break. That might be a couple of them, but from being at the game, the first two, when he held on to it, especially against Southwood, that was because nobody was open. Yeah. The difference was against Western Kentucky. You're talking about that pocket. That pocket wasn't breaking down as fast, and so he was able to step up into the throw, and then a couple times he was able to take off and run with it and he wasn't having to backpedal. So it's a combination of things. It's the guys getting open. It's the line and it's Jalen being able to step up into the pocket. And it's also Jalen has to trust his guys coming out of breaks as well. So I think it's an overall combination of things when you, when you stop and look at it. Yeah, let's get to break X, but I'll toss it to you to do that. Uh, one, one closing thought is, um, we when we call quick passes, passes that are meant to be quick, I think he's getting rid of the ball. You know, if it's a yes. quick out, if it's a, a swing pass, or if anything like a, a arrow out in the flat, he's getting rid of the ball quick. So that's why I say, is it him holding, or is it guys getting getting out of there? I don't know, uh, but I think it's maybe as you said, a combination. Toss it to you. As we get ready to wrap up this. Friday edition. We'll head into the fourth quarter. We will talk some more keys to victories. We'll give our score predictions, and Todd will get you on the other side. But this is the Martin Houston Show with Martin and Xavier Powered by Box I Care. Go inside the Alabama Crimson Tide with the Gary Harris Show. Fridays at the Free with the Gary Harris Show, 9 a.m. I'll be live at Ennis Free Iris Pub on University Boulevard in Tuscaloosa, and we'll be rocking out the sports talk. We'll have our Bama football trivia contest giveaway presented by T-Town Menswear, T-Town Gallery, University Mall. Special guests, phone calls, a lot happening on Friday at 9 a.m. on the Gary Harris Show, so make sure and tune in at 9 a.m. Catch the Gary Harris Show Monday through Friday, 9 to 11 a.m. on Tide 100.9 and Tide100.9.com. Here's what's trending on the Tuscaloosa thread. Good Friday morning. A longtime mover and shaker in Tuscaloosa at UA and statewide in business has passed away at the age of 73. William F. Bill O'Connor Jr. was a leader in several areas of the University of Alabama administration and a power in Alabama's business community. He's known as O.C., Graveside services set for 1 p.m. at Tuscaloosa Memorial Park on Tuesday. Click TuscaloosaThread.com for more local news throughout the day. It's free. Don Hartley, Town Square Media, Tuscaloosa. Tide 100.9 Traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. Hurricane Francine still dumping rain all over the southeast, and it is wet and soggy out there, so you definitely want to use caution. And we've got some trouble here. I'm seeing this on 43 at Joe Malisham Parkway. You want to watch out for that. That is uh, causing some huge delays there on the south. It gets the job done. You just have to get in the seat. Learn more at your John Deere dealer or visit johndeere.com slash Gator XUV. Keep it locked into Tide 100.9 for more of the Martin Houston Show with Martin Houston and X's and O's Sports, Xavier Houston. Welcome back into the Martin Houston Show with Martin and Xavier powered by Box Sports. As we get ready to kick off the Harvest Church two-minute warning, visit Harvest Church Sunday at 10, where we love God and love people. We've got tied in on the Empowerment Strategy Solution hotline. How you doing this morning, Todd? What you got for us? Uh, doing, 
doing doing well, X uh, Martin. Man, thank you for taking my call and great great analysis and, and talking on Wisconsin. Um, you know the old. I, I've always admired Wisconsin and them big corn fed boys because they they just try to beat you at the line of scrimmage, and that's where the games are won. And just brutalizing people with just running the ball with a bowling back bowling ball running back that has no fear. And um, if I'm Wisconsin. I'm going to do my best to get back to that and try to control the clock as best as I can because Alabama is so explosive and, and can put up. Well, you, we've seen it last week, what they can do in five minutes. <laughs> so it's, 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 there's no question that Alabama can do what we would love to see them do. Uh, what I would love Alabama to do is come out in that fashion in the beginning of the game and just but there's just something about putting a score two scores on you know in in the first you know five ten five ten minutes of the game first quarter um it just it just demoralizes uh, a team and it and it shows that you can impose your will on them and that's what we want to see and it's going to be interesting i don't know i'm not well educated on on wisconsin and what they've done this year so far but uh, the history speaks for them and and um, and I'm I'm just curious to see if they'll come out and try to run that ball and control that clock. Hey, hey, stop for that because you bring up a great point, X. Uh, uh, X, if you really think about it, Alabama's scoring drives in in the first game, and then you look at their scoring drives in the second game, we're averaging about what scoring every three plays. <laughs> I mean, yeah, well, our our yeah, drives. Uh, 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 but um, you know, uh, uh, Todd, did you is Todd still there? Did you have a score for us, Todd, before we let you go? Yeah, you know, and I don't want to get my emotions in it, but I think it's going to be a little closer than what people think. I think Alabama's still trying to find their identity and and really control that. What what them throwing them helmets on the sidelines? You know, I'm I'm really focused on that. I want to I want to nip that in the bud and and try to get everybody. To, lead, to to go up to Milrose standards because I became a Milrose fan in, at the Texas A&M game two years ago when everybody was hammering him. I, I fell in love with that kid that day, man. And uh, But score prediction, I would say, I'm going to say it's going to be around, I would say 30, 32 to, to I'm going to give them Wisconsin boys at least 14. And what's the total rushing yards? For Alabama? Yes. Uh, let's man, let's go. Let, let's go with um, about 180. All right, thanks, uh, Todd X. I'll toss it to you, man. All right, got some rapid fire questions. Was the Nick Saban dedication a distraction? Yes, and we haven't yes. considered that. I think without a doubt, uh, that was a distraction that we've not calculated into what happened last week. He himself would say yes, X, uh, based on his approach and philosophy. All right. I, I think you? he could have been. Yeah. It is one of those things where, well, yeah, you know, Coach Saban would 100% <laughs> agree that it, it was a distraction just because of the way he coaches the game. So I'll, I'll go with it was a distraction and something that he would do, everything in his power not to let his team have to deal with. Um Keys to the game. <clears throat> Excuse well, me. Um, what are some of your keys to the game? I, I hit mine earlier. I think the play calling uh, flow needs to be better, incorporate some of the short game into the play calling, and, you know, just execute, eliminate the penalties, dumb mistakes. And it's not just penalties. It's timing of penalties. I think we've already had, like, four touchdowns called off the board. Yeah, I think that the penalties is definitely one of I will go the offensive line playing better. Defense not letting a team that hasn't really tried to stretch the field through two games stretch the field on them, as well as I'll go with play calling as well when it comes down to how Alabama does things to move the ball in certain situations. Uh, players of the game. Who's got to be the player of the game for Alabama to get a win this week? Uh, the O line. <laughs> uh, I, I just think the O line as a group. Uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, Kate and Proctor and Booker can't see what that left side of the offensive line does in the run game. 
Got one for defense? Um, I, I think that it'll be huge for the inside linebackers uh, in that front. Uh, so I'm going to say that I'm picking a group I know, but I'm going to say D-line uh, needs to stop the run and make them one-dimensional in the pass game. I will go – I will go the running back room this week. I think we're going to need to control the ball. I think we're going to have to be physical. Now, granted, that's playing off of the offensive line. And if they're good, I think the running back room will be fantastic this week. Defensively, <laughs> I'm going to go with the inside linebackers. Now, I know Justin Jefferson doesn't play 50 snaps a game, but can those guys do enough in the first half? that when he gets ready to come in the second half, they'll be able to be spelled and be fresh in key moments of the game throughout the second half. Uh, scores, <coughs> excuse me, score for the game. Uh, I think uh, uh, that uh, Alabama gets in the 40s once again, uh, but I think this week we get a couple field goals, uh, and so I got it 48 uh, to – uh, 13 again. I think Alabama runs away with it, and I think Jalen Miro and company has uh, 265 yards. <laughs> I am going to go with 38 to 13, but it is field goals, and we do get field goals on the board this week. We finally get to see what this Lou Groza award winner can do in Graham Nicholson. So that is my take. So, and I have 221 yards rushing for the game. So, but hey, it's Friday. I'm Xavier Houston. That's Martin Houston. We've been pressing all the right buttons. We're wired behind the scenes. This is it. Roll Tide. Have a great weekend, everyone. All right. Hey, we appreciate you. Make sure you join us on Monday as we'll break down the Alabama versus Wisconsin game. We're at Kenneth Smith III to the conversation. Uh, we'll be live, local, and rolling on both the airwaves and on the live stream, and we need you to be a part of that. Remember this, trust in the Lord always. Lean not your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your past. That's been the Martin Houston Show, powered by Box Eye Care and the Harvest Church Minute Warning. See you on Sunday. Join us where we love God, love people. Roll tight, everybody, and go take care of the Badgers. <laughs>